You know, man, tonight was just another prime example of how good and how special pro wrestling could be. Welcome, everyone. This is the kid, DC Wrestling. I hope everybody's having a wonderful Wednesday. Obviously, it's Wednesday night, and you know what that means, AEW Dynamite. But this wasn't just an ordinary AEW Dynamite. No, folks, tonight was the highly anticipated AEW blood and guts battle between the pinnacle and the inner circle. What a crazy ending. We will talk about it. We will talk about the match, but we did kick off the night with John Moxley and Andy Kingston taking on Kenny Omega and Michael Nakazawa. This matchup, it was, to be honest with you, I didn't really care for it, to be honest with you. I knew that Moxley and Kingston were getting the win. Obviously, this is probably going to set up Moxley and Eddie Kingston versus the Young Bucks of Dublin Nothing, which I have no problem whatsoever. But as far as this match goes, it was meh, to be completely honest with you. Next, we had Cody Rhodes taking on QT Marshall. This is, a, again, this is an okay match. To be quite honest with you, this whole pay-per-view, well, this wasn't a pay-per-view. This was a TV special. When you look at the upper card, it was okay, meh. Um... Obviously, the main focus going into the night was the main event, and rightfully so. But as far as Cody versus QT goes, um, again, it was meh. Uh, Cody gets the win here. Um, I I thought this would be Cody's last appearance before he goes off and you know has his uh, his baby, you know, with his lovely wife Brandy. But it seems like that Cody's going to be having an announcement next week about Double or Nothing. So yeah. As for QT, man, I don't know, man, because QT, I feel like QT and his little stable could be like a little mid-card group. I don't really see them being like a big main event type of group. I feel like as of right now, they're just going to keep him at mid-card, which is rightfully so. So nonetheless, Cody gets to win here. So it is announced Dr. Britt Baker will be taking on a car Sheeta at Double or Nothing. Dr. Britt Baker getting the win over Julia Hart um, in what was a squash match, basically. Um... This is good. This is good. I think having Britt Baker not only face Sheeta double or nothing, but be the one to dethrone Hikaru Sheeta absolutely makes sense. I mean, come on. You you, you can't paint it any better than that. Um, I have no problem with that whatsoever. As a matter of fact, I'm actually happy that they're going with this match. And I think, again, Britt Baker would be someone that the AW Women's Championship really needs. And I haven't really said this a lot, but the AEW women's division has really gotten way better than it was when AEW first started. So shout out to them for doing that. Okay, so we next, we had the semi-main event. So count Uncensored winning the four-way tag team match. They will take on the Young Bucks next week. Um, I got no problem with that whatsoever. Obviously, SCU, it was very predictable. And plus, I believe they're number one in the rankings anyway. We did get a little promo hype up for um, John Moxley's IWGP US title match against uh, what's the guy's name? I can't. It's hard to announce. I think it's Yuji N Nagata. You know something like that. Sorry if I mispronounce these Japanese guys. I really am sorry, guys. But um, that is going. That is shaping up to be a hard hitting affair. Um, that's actually the first time that the U.S. title for the IWGP will be defended at AEW. So that's pretty cool. Um, also, we did get Miro coming out. He was talking about how he wants, um, you know, Darby Allen, which is pretty cool. You know, I think Miro could be someone that could take the title off Darby Allen, considering what they did to Darby Allen tonight. I mean, Jesus, what a brutal bump Darby Allen took off those, uh, those those stairs because that was brutal i'm telling you man darby allen he's one of my favorites but boy do i get concerned every time he wrestles because i don't want my boy to get seriously hurt you know what i'm saying um what else happened on the show oh so they finally announced who kenny omega will be facing a double or nothing there's going to be a number one contenders match next week between Pac and orange cassidy honestly i think orange cassidy's gonna win we've seen the Pac and omega match not once but twice, you, you know, we don't really need to see it again. Orange Cassidy is someone new, someone fresh. But at the same time, I understand, you know, this is a company that wins and losses matter. And Orange Cassidy, you know, hasn't really lost any singles matches lately. But 
I feel like that, you know, this matchup not only is very predictable, but like this matchup, it, it's kind of obviously there's little to no build whatsoever. I mean, AEW, AEW double or nothing is in a few weeks time and they need to start really building up towards Orange Cassidy and Omega because obviously they haven't really been doing any of that. And obviously some are going to be like, well, why wasn't it Christian? Well, Christian still needs to get more wins here in AEW. Or why wasn't the Hangman? Well, Hangman lost, you know, the other week to Brian Cage. And plus, I think they're saving up Hangman for All Out, which makes perfect sense because the story is there. So Orange Cassidy Omega, obviously no build up, but hey, I mean, great match regardless. It just sucks because I wish it could have more built up, but it is what it is. And now the main event, AEW Blood and Guts. And my God. We didn't see that much guts tonight, but my God almighty, did we see some blood tonight. Lots of blood. Man, was this match awesome. I loved it. Um, the start, the finish, um, MJF just proving once again why he's one of the best heels in the business right now. I mean, just throwing Jericho off the cell. I love the ending. Well, I know the ending was a little bit anticlimactic to some people, which is totally understandable, but MJF you know, I said it. I made a whole video about it. The pinnacle winning makes sense. You had to establish the pinnacle as a dominant heel group. And that is what AEW did tonight. Bravo on AEW. Bravo to Tony Khan. Bravo for, for having the pinnacle go over because it made sense. I know a lot of people were like, but the inner circle should have gotten the win. No, the pinnacle, it made more sense on paper. Now, before I close out this review, there is a small nitpick I have for the match. What for the love of God, these wrestling networks, TNT, USA, Fox, when you do these big marquee matches and even championship matches on your TV show, don't go to commercial break. Not once, not twice, but three times did this main event go into picture and picture. And it was just it, I wouldn't say it ruined the match, but it, it just was like, come on, man. Like, you, you didn't have to go to picture and picture because didn't four AEW winners come in Kenny Omega and Moxley went to commercial break? So why couldn't they go to commercial break this time? I don't I don't understand. But overall, this was a really great match. Um, awesome, awesome main event. This was, well, honestly, overall, the Blood and Guts pay-per-view was well, I mean, TV show was okay, but obviously the main focus was the main event, which was awesome. Pinnacle stands tall, and this has been my AEW Dynamite review. Hopefully, I don't get striked, but if I, you know, if I do, you know, I'm not. But anyway, this has been the Kid DC Wrestling, and so on. Yeah.